work it, make it, do it, make sense. So uh, five years ago, the company I work for, Heroku, uh, published a manifesto called the 12 Factor App. Uh, this manifesto is really just a collection of principles and best practices that lead to more scalable, maintainable, and portable applications. Uh, it's derived from what we've learned uh, from our platform as a service, uh, which hosts about 5 million applications and handles 10 billion requests per day. Uh, but it applies to any kind of deployment, whether it's uh, to the cloud, to your own infrastructure, or whatever. So when this, was, uh, when this first came out in 2012, the state of the art for Java deployment was taking your code, packaging it up into a war file, and then dropping that war file into a running Tomcat or JBoss container or application server. So this type of deployment, which I call traditional Java deployment, uh, sort of has sort of an impedance mismatch with the 12-factor app. But over the last five years, uh, people have begun to understand the 12 factors and what they mean, uh, and frameworks like Spring and Spring Boot have adopted these principles. And today we have a great selection of frameworks and tools that use modern Java de deployment, where we take our code, we package it up into a jar file or set of jar files, and then we can deploy that jar file anywhere, to the cloud, your own infrastructure, whether it, the only external dependency of that jar file is the JVM, so it's truly portable uh, in, that, in that sense of Java being portable. So this is why uh, we hear people like Josh Long saying, make jar, not war. Uh, the modern Java approach to deployment uses executable jar files. So these are the uh, 12 factors. Uh, I'm going to try and hash over them as quickly as I can uh, in the 15 minutes. I'm also going to try and refresh them a little bit. Uh, these were published in a time when there, were, there was no talk of microservices, uh, there was no Docker, and containerization was not as well understood. So there's been some modern uh, developments that we need to update it for. I'm also going to try and tack on uh, a couple other factors that I think should be included uh, if it were published today. So the first one is code base. Uh, this is a principle that states uh, you should use version control. Now, some of the things I talk about you're going to think are obvious, and they are. Uh, some because uh, they're just common practices, others because they've been adopted uh, very well in the last few years. Uh, but this principle goes beyond uh, using version control. It also states that uh, you should have one version control repository per application, and then you should deploy that repository or that application to multiple environments. Uh, so this is uh, essentially discouraging monorepos, where we put lots of different apps or services into a single repository, uh, sometimes including like mobile apps. Um, this is a principle that at Heroku we've uh, lightened up on. Uh, we actually use monorepos internally a little bit. Uh, but personally, I still discourage it. I find that uh, having multiple applications in a single repository uh, sort of breaks down the decoupling between those apps. You end up with commits that apply to multiple uh, apps within that repo, and it kind of blur the lines of, of their distinctions. So keeping those, that isolation and, and ensuring things are, are packaged up well also relates to the next factor, which is dependencies. So in the 12-factor app, you should explicitly declare and isolate your dependencies, uh, and you should never rely on the implicit existence of system-wide packages. So in other words, your dependencies, everything your app depends on, except for the JVM itself, should be defined in your POMXML or your build.gradle. Uh, these should be managed dependencies. Uh, and if you do that, uh, it becomes very easy to make jar, not war. Uh, when we deployed war files, the Tomcat container, or our application server, was an external dependency of our application that was unmanaged. We had no control over its version or its configuration. Uh, by inverting the model and using jar files, uh, we, we can tightly control that, uh, how our application executes. All right, the next factor is configuration. So in the context of the 12-factor app, when, when we say configuration, we mean anything that changes between environments. So your dependencies are like a type of configuration, uh, but that's not what we're talking about here. Those, your dependencies stay the same between environments. Uh, configuration that changes between environments should be strictly separated from your code. Uh, it should be stored in environment variables in the environment as opposed to in your code repository. So in other words, don't check passwords into Git. Now, I know you wouldn't check your own personal password into Git, but you may have checked in a database password or an Amazon token. Uh, and if you did so, you probably justified it by saying, well, this is a private GitHub repository. No one can see these things. But uh, private GitHub repositories are stored in clear text on a server somewhere, probably in California. I don't know. And therein is the problem. 
uh, private repositories are not sufficient for protecting secrets. So these uh, secrets, these configuration variables, uh, should be stored in the environment as environment variables, uh, which you can then consume from your application. So a good litmus test for this principle is, can you make your application open source at any moment without compromising any of the secrets, any of the credentials in your application? If you can do that, uh, you're probably well on your way to satisfying this factor. Uh, so this is uh, tightly related to the next factor, which is backing services. Uh, backing services are any kind of service that your application consumes as part of its regular operation. So your database, Postgres, some kind of caching services. These uh, backing services should be treated as attachable resources, and they should be attached via a single entry point, a URL, uh, and that, in, that URL should be stored as an environment variable so that it can be changed between environments. So a good example of this is if you're using Spring, uh, the Spring data source URL environment variable is automatically picked up by the framework and actually takes precedence over just about every other type of configuration, uh, such as YAML files. Uh, I think uh, options on the command line are the only thing that take a higher precedence. Okay, the next factor is build, release, and run. A 12-factor app is deployed in three discrete steps. Build, in which we turn our code into some kind of build artifact, artifact or artifacts. Uh, in our case, these are jar files. Uh, release, in which we combine those build artifacts with the configuration for a particular environment, uh, because that configuration is separated from our code. And we create some kind of release image. Uh, that release image, uh, its format depends on uh, where you're deploying to. So if you're deploying to Heroku, it's something we manage internally as us, call it a slug. If you're using Docker, this is your Docker image. The final step is you run your application from that release image so that every time you launch a new process or restart your application, you're deriving it from that same immutable image, which gives you uh, a guarantee that each of those processes will be that, that are executing will be the same. Now, these three discrete steps should exist, but ideally they are automated into a single step. If you're deploying to Heroku, that's a git push Heroku master. If you're using Cloud Foundry, that's a CF push. If you're using Docker, it's Docker push. Uh, but the key here is to automate the process. The next factor is uh, processes. Processes should be stateless. Don't use sticky sessions. Uh, after that is port binding. Uh, so port binding states that the 12-factor app is completely self-contained. Uh, it should export HTTP as a service by binding to a port. So this is uh, in contrast to how we deployed war files, where we relied on the external container to bind to the port and sort of curry requests into our application. In the 12-factor app, uh, your application knows how to do this. So Tomcat or Jetty or Netty becomes a dependency of your application, and your application exports its services. So again, make jar, not war. Uh, we've seen a large number of frameworks, modern Java frameworks, that are adopting this kind of uh, pattern. Uh, of course, Spring Boot, probably the most popular, uh, but there's also Drop Wizard, which I think was one of the first to really present this. Uh, Wildfly Swarm, Play Framework, Rat Pack, uh, I believe that all of the, uh, or I believe for, to choose a framework at this, at this stage in the Java lifecycle, it should have adopted these principles or it's out of date. All right, the next factor is concurrency. Uh, your application should be able to scale up, which the JVM is very good at doing, but it should also scale out. And you scale out by decomposing your application processes into individual apps or processes or uh, process types that do specific kinds of jobs well. Uh, in the past, we would uh, sort of favor doing this as having multiple thread pools within a single application. Uh, and we typically did that because uh, infrastructure was not cheap, right? If you're deploying on-premise, uh, you would have to purchase a new server to scale up. Uh, but today, with the cloud, uh, and especially with containerization, uh, these types of in, uh, resources are essentially cheap. So it pays to decompose your app into different background web and worker processes so that you can scale them independently. Uh, the next factor is disposability. Uh, a 12-factor app should be quick to start up, resilient to failure, and graceful to shut down. Uh, I think the best way to illustrate this is with a, an analogy to pets. Uh, someone said, uh, our servers are not pets, or at least in the past we've treated them as pets. Uh, we wanted to keep them healthy. We wanted to, if they were sick, we would nurture them. We wanted to keep them alive forever, keep them running forever. But servers are not pets, especially in the cloud. They're like cattle. Servers are a commodity. Uh, if a server is uh, sick, we kill it. We get a new one. We go to the market and we buy more servers. Uh, so treat them as a commodity. Treat them as a disposable resource. Uh, the next factor is dev prod parity, which I actually think is the most... 
important of the 12 factors. Uh, this factor states that your development environment should be as identical as possible to your production environment and to every environment in between. Uh, the place we see this most commonly violated is at the database layer. Uh, if you're using Postgres in production, you should be using Postgres in development. This is uh, very easy today, especially with uh, tools like Docker and Docker Compose. Um, but we also see it, or in the past, we've seen it with our application container. So uh, if we, I, I've seen many apps where uh, developers are using Eclipse to run in development. They're running on Tomcat and staging, and then ultimately in WebLogic or something in production. Uh, but today, with uh, executable jar files and the sort of Spring Boot model of deployment, we can embed the same server into our application and ensure that we have the exact same uh, underlying server for each environment. So again, yeah, make jar not war. So the reason I think this is the most important factor is that parity between environments leads to reproducibility. So if you have parity between each of your environments, it becomes easier to stand up new environments, uh, new developer machines, uh, new test environments. Uh, and, and that, in turn, uh, leads to fewer consequences when disposing of applications. So if you can uh, have this parity, you can quickly replace a crash process or quickly stand up scale up for, with uh, new instances. Uh, it also leads to uh, build, release, and run, and some of the other, uh, other factors. All right, so the next factor is logs. Uh, in the 12-factor app, you should treat logs as events. Uh, so that is, uh, you should have all of your applications logging to standard out, or I'm sorry, all of your processes logging to standard out. You should collect those logs into some kind of funnel, uh, probably piping them into some system like Kafka so that you can then search and filter, uh, but the key is to treat them as events. The last factor is admin processes. Uh, admin processes are things like uh, database migrations, background jobs, one-off jobs. These kinds of admin tasks should be run as isolated processes. In other words, you should not SSH into your production server, which is running your Java web app, uh, and run some command. Uh, and this is, I think, easier to do with containerization. Uh, when you stand up a new Docker container, for a web process, you can also stand up a new Docker container uh, or Heroku uh, Dino for uh, those admin tasks. OK, so those are the 12 factors. Uh, there's a great book uh, called Beyond the 12 Factor App, and it sort of uh, introduces some other concepts uh, that I think uh, should be included in the, uh, in the 12 factors that they were published today. I'm going to talk about two of those real quick. One is telemetry. Uh, Kevin Hoffman makes this analogy to deploying to the cloud as if you're deploying a probe into space. Uh, this thing is not coming back to Earth, so if there is a problem, it needs to be instrumented so that we can have all of the history of what happened and what led to that, that problem. Uh, so we should be collecting telemetry on performance metrics. Uh, we should collect domain-specific tele telemetry, you know, uh, that relates to the domain objects in your application. Uh, you should perform health checks so that you know when your application is up and working. And then ultimately, you should have system logs, just like we talked about with the logs factor. Uh, so there's some great tools for this. Prometheus uh, is a metrics uh, client, uh, Graphite, and then, of course, just regular JMX. The next factor is security. Uh, a modern application should take security first. It should not be an afterthought. Uh, we should use HTTPS everywhere. Uh, we have Let's Encrypt now, very easy and free way to get uh, certificates. Uh, you should also have role-based access. Uh, even if you don't need to restrict access, uh, role-based access at least allows you to uh, retain some kind of audit trail so you can determine what user made what operations. So you can learn uh, more about the 12 factors at 12factor.net. Uh, on my blog at jcutner.github.io, I write about 12 factors and other things as they relate specifically to Java. Uh, I go by Codefinger on the web. Uh, I work at Heroku, where I am the Java platform owner. So if you've ever deployed to Heroku and it didn't work, it's my fault. And you can come talk to me down at our booth, uh, down on the uh, conference floor. We'd, be, we'd love to talk about 12-factor apps and cloud and, and Java. Thank you. <laughs>